Imagine you're Nintendo. You're relatively strapped for cash since your entire company is failing. There's one light at the end of the tunnel though. There's a game that's about a release that could shake up everything, Splatoon. But how would you market this game? How would it do well? You look for various ways to market your game and try literally all of them. From making very unflattering inkling sculptures and putting it in a mall, to starting an ice cream truck, everything's on the table. And there's no hindering this game's chances of being a success. Now, not all of these IRL marketing campaigns were failures. The Splatoon Mess Fest is my favorite of them all. I've talked about them in another video, but not in great detail. The Splatoon Mess Fest was basically an advertisement set up on Santa Monica Pier, where guests who showed up could be able to participate in a bunch of Splatoon themed mini games. I wish I could have been there, but I was a little too young at the time. I was around nine years old when the event happened. Yeah, but we weren't talking about the good IRL marketing stunts for the TF2 meets the Blob game mashup Splatoon. We're discussing the bad ones, the ones that haunt me in my nightmares. And this one definitely takes the cake for the latter. This one is a tragedy, something I wouldn't want to see with my own two eyes. I'm glad to be from the US of A because this happened in Toronto, Canada. Basically, Nintendo partnered up with this mall in Toronto to advertise Splatoon. Now, this doesn't sound that bad at first. I mean, as I stated in the beginning, Nintendo was ready to do anything if it would help the sales of Splatoon, alongside the Wii U's cripplingly low sales at the time, and even to this day. The promo in question? Putting Splatoon characters and this orangish yellow water in the fountain? And of course, people went to town for very good reasons. What I'm about to show you is a very disturbing piece of media. Something so shocking that I don't know if I can show it. Brace yourselves. It's the Inkling statue in the water fountain. But like, come on, this is terrifying. But moving on from that, here's the ice cream truck I was talking about. Or more specifically, a yogurt truck. Nintendo partnered up with a brand to start a small yogurt truck outside their shop to promote the game. But one slight issue. How would Splatoon translate? into yogurt. I mean, Splatoon is a game about painting the floor. So what do you think Nintendo did? What do you think the yogurt company did? Well, if you were there for yourself, you would know exactly what the yogurt tastes like. Although it only happened in Canada, they never posted it to the Nintendo of America account. I think they should have just because it's something that they would be interested in. Just knowing that it happened in the first place, it would be amazing. Although the video has about a million views, I've never heard anybody really talk about it since it happened so long ago. And most of us weren't there. Most of the views were from around when the game was racked actually just released, so most people have completely forgotten about it. It's a shame because it looks like a really fun event, just like the Mess Fest. These are two marketing ploys by Nintendo to promote the game, but did these actually benefit the game and the company? Well, um, no. The Wii U still sold terribly, and alongside Splatoon, it also sold pretty bad, being the worst selling game in the franchise. But I mean, it is the first one, and it's also on the Wii U, so you can't really blame the game for that. The Wii U is the worst selling Nintendo console in history besides the whatever this is. And Splatoon is one of the best selling games on the Wii U. So it did good for what it had. It took what it had and went far with it. Now, maybe the first game didn't do well, but what about the other two games that came after it? Those games did amazing. Matter of fact, Splatoon 3 sold millions of copies in the first few days in just Japan alone. I guess that could be an unfair statement because Splatoon is way bigger in Japan than it ever is in the West. I, I don't know what's with Japanese people and squid teenagers, but I mean. Now, I talked about the Splatoon Mess Fest in the beginning, but Nintendo clearly doesn't want you to forget about it. They've left it up and it has millions of views. They've also left up the other trailers, but um, something tells me they uh, weren't too proud of the, uh, the Inkling sculpture in the Toronto Mall. Now, these marketing stunts actually have a reason to be around. I, I know some of them are, are pretty bad, but um, they've actually done really good things for the franchise. They've introduced people to the franchise for the first time who never would have been interested in it if they didn't see these. Okay, I don't think anybody bought the game after they saw the, the Toronto Mall. Okay, I'll, I'll stop talking about it. It's not that cool. But the games after it sold really well, proving that it might have just been a hardware problem. I mean, yeah, the Wii U didn't sell that well. And Splatoon didn't sell that well either. But on the Switch, which is higher selling than the Wii, which was Nintendo's most sold console at the time, those games sold a lot more. Splatoon selling about 14 million copies. Splatoon 3 is only a few months old, so it's kind of unfair to compare the copies of that game. But I'll wait in a few years. I'll come back about five years later and tell you the results. If I'm not dead by then. In about five years, I'll be like old enough to like drink and stuff. Why would I be doing this? It's kind of a shame we don't have any promos like these anymore. Nintendo of Japan has a bunch of these promos, but that's in Japan. Like I don't, I don't live there. Now this makes complete sense as Splatoon does way better in Japan than it ever does in the West. There are more Splatoon players in Japan alone than the entirety of the West. This might also feed into the stereotype of all 
Japanese people being insanely good at Splatoon, even though they, they, they have more pro players, but they also have more players at the same time. All these attempts to make Splatoon do well in the West kind of backfired though. It never reached this godly status in the West like it did in Japan. Maybe Splatoon is just a game targeted towards Japanese people. Maybe there's just something about it that appeals to Japanese culture more than American culture. Maybe it's the marketing that I was talking about earlier that was the reason the game failed. Or maybe Japanese people are just absolutely insane and they'll buy anything Nintendo makes. Besides Zelda. I don't know why they don't like Zelda. The West really likes Zelda, but Japan doesn't care at all. And I have a statistic to prove this. That's actually really sad. So you know the game uh, Ring Fit Adventure? Yeah, it's basically like, uh, you know, an exercise game. I, I don't know. I've never used it. I'm never planning on using it. It looks kind of goofy, but I mean, that that's your choice. Ring Fit Adventure sold better in Japan than Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I'm not kidding. So this is basically telling Nintendo, hey, let's make Ring Fit Adventure 2 instead of The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Let's do that. That's a better idea. But that's about where the marketing ends. Splatoon's marketing has had ups and downs. And nowadays, it's pretty basic. They never do anything super special anymore. The only time they do anything remotely special is in Japan because they know that's where the game's the biggest and where it counts the most. They tried with the West and it didn't work. It's kind of sad, but we'll just have to hope that Nintendo has a change of heart.